welcome achievers to an easy achievers game podcast for the week of october 12th we're in like the spooky season right is that what is that what people say it's actually nice uh here of course i, I live in georgia and it's actually not blazing hot anymore it stopped i walked outside the other day and it, there was a a little nip in the air just a little kind of nip in the air for, for the little chill and it's welcomed it is quite welcome as it gets pretty insanely hot here. And I feel like it's over for the year now. I feel like it's it's gone. We can move on from the heat. We can move on from the stress that is the heat. And we, we're into this kind of fall time now, which is really nice. And I cannot wait to experience more of that. Let me know what, what are we feeling out there? How does it feel where you're living? I always love talking to people, of course, from different places. So like, you know, what's it like? Uh, bonus points if you're outside of the U.S. Let's get into the show. The, the show actually pretty light, medium this week. I don't know. We don't have much in, in terms of something like, like concrete, very... I don't think we're going to have to delve too, too deep this week in any analytics or these things. We have a couple things like, of course, the PS5 Slim was announced couple other things a couple of reviews out there a couple of spoilers we're going to be discussing uh, a couple of reminders of certain things uh we have an update to the unity situation that we talked about a few weeks ago and that's really it we're, we're going to be kind of a more relaxed easy shivers game podcast for this week as i very much am excited for uh we'll go into the month with renewed ambition because in a couple days we have spider-man of course in eight days we will have spider-man we'll be able to play and we'll know how good that is i'm very looking forward to that and i have plenty of things to discuss this week too as what i've been playing has been quite good quite good and i have not seen many people discuss what i've been playing so i'm excited not so rapid fire lords of the fallen reviews are out apparently there's going to be some issues with the xbox versions as the reviews are out the game set to release let me double check lords of the fallen when does this come out? I want. I don't want to say wrong. October thirteenth. So tomorrow, the game is coming out tomorrow. But there were, uh, there was a little thing that they were made. PC, PS five, and uh, and PC versions were pretty much released for review, and no Xbox versions. So, uh, and they even admit in a little post on their official Twitter account that they highlight that issue, and they were saying, yeah, we're bringing the Xbox in polarity, and we're gonna have a patch ready assumably for day one but it didn't sa they didn't say that so you would have to assume maybe not maybe the day two or day three and there's maybe some issues still remaining with the game uh they're not delaying the release so the game might come out not working properly so if this is something you were excited for and have pre-ordered maybe hold off a few days before either buying it or really delving into it maybe play something else until there's any word of a fix as this game Reviewed pretty mixed. I saw, I mean, I saw numbers everywhere. The Metacritic and Open Critic are, uh, it looks like they're settling around a low 70, which is a pretty horrible review for what they were going for. This They, they weren't going for like, you know, a medium game. That, that game probably cost, I, I haven't delved too deep into it, but I mean, $80 million easily, probably. I can't imagine it cost any less than that unless they uh, are doing some magic over there, maybe, but. It's a pretty expensive game, and to review that low is pretty disastrous. But what's funny is the people I know that will like it have liked it and seem to recommend it. So maybe if you really are a Souls-like person and you're already done with Liza P like I am, maybe you'll delve into it. I am in no rush to play this as I have so much else to play. PS5 Cloud Streaming is coming to PlayStation Plus Premium at the end of this month. As a reminder, there will be titles available on the service, but there will also be some games that you already own that you can be streamed as well. Of course, you have to own these digitally. No word that if you have the disc, can you put that in and, and stream that? It doesn't technically make sense, but maybe you could stream it to you somewhere else. I don't know. Um, that I guess that doesn't make sense, but like maybe you could put in the disc that offers a license. You don't have to download anything, and then you stream the game. That'd be kind of cool, but it doesn't seem like that's the... That's going to be the way in the cards. It's just if you own it digitally, there'll be select games. I think the most recent Resident Evil was on there, I believe, maybe. 
um, and a couple other things. You can check the blog post for for some titles, and we'll have to. We'll. I feel like we'll know more when this thing just launches. What what works, what doesn't, and of course, if you have premium, you'll be able to stream the PS5 games on there, and you won't have to download them. Up in the air on if that's going to be an option. I I firmly believe like PS4 streaming, PS3 streaming, and all these things were never great, and I never recommended them as even in the best internet connections that I use. Uh, and I, I pay for one terabyte, and I have pretty good speeds. I can get up to two to three hundred, and if I'm hardwired, I mean, there's no problem at all. And with certain things, it's just, it, it never felt great. I remember trying it out a few times throughout the years, and it's like, it's you know, you're playing the game, but you're not, you know, it doesn't feel as good as just playing the game. But there's some games that you don't have the option for. PS5, though, I feel like you should just play it. It will be fun to stream it i guess if you don't have to, you don't have to download it and it takes away the issue of like oh you know i don't have space because i have these games that i'm playing currently i would say just delete something but you know i understand i'm a, I'm a hoarder as well of titles on the systems assassin's creed mirage has launched and it's unclear how well it's done so far but according to ubisoft uh they had a quote quote with the number of players being in line with past successful launches, such as Assassin's Creed Origins and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, we are humbled by the positive reception, end quote. There's a much, much more lengthy post that you can find on their social media page, if you'd like. It's just flowery things, and they say some stats that, you you know, that are whatever. Every company does now, where they just say, like, oh, you've ran millions of miles or whatever. I'm actually currently playing the game. I, I will... Quickly, you know, I'll actually save it for what I've been playing. I, I won't bore the people that want the news uh, with what I've been playing about it. But I will say it's very interesting that uh, they just don't say the numbers, which to me means that it's not great. I imagine what they mean by this. Oh, it's in line with these two other games. Assumably and undoubtedly, I feel this game was made with far less money than those two previous games. Far, far, far less money. Uh, it's clear when you play the game, probably didn't cost very much to make this, especially when you compare it to a Valhalla or an Odyssey, uh, especially when you compare it to those two. And that means if it's sold anywhere near Perility, that means their their profit margins were much bigger than those other two games. And I'll be curious to see why they made this to begin with. Maybe this was a buffer as they wanted something to release. Maybe it's an experiment. Maybe it's to see if people still want this kind of you know, not fully fleshed out world. It's more of a kind of experience. I mean, you're only really in one city. You don't go anywhere else. Uh, and that's very unlike the uh, the most recent Ubisoft. I mean, even going back to Brotherhood and these things, you were uh, in Assassin's Creed 2, you're going to other places. This is just one large city. You don't go anywhere else. It's one map. So it's quite interesting. I'll be interested to see if this is a pattern or just a test. Spider-Man 2 spoilers are out, so beware and prepare. And also a review of the game gone live early. I can't remember who released it. Don't think it's really relevant. Uh, as it's not really newsworthy, I'm sure they'll get in trouble uh, to, for it. But I heard this is always the terrifying part of being in the industry in that way, where you're getting these copies for reviews and these things, and you have embargoes, and they're very, very serious embargoes. PlayStation is chief among them. They're very serious about embargoes. They do not mess around with these things, and that means they messed up pretty heavily, as they were eight days early. That is pretty, pretty strange, to say the least. Uh, I feel for them, though, as mistakes happen, but I won't be shocked if they don't get a game again. We'll see, though. Uh, oh, and also, to note with spoilers, be careful if you're using certain social medias. Of course, if you use Twitter like I do, let's go into that go into that uh, settings tab and, and start muting some words. Get get creative. Spidey, S-P-I-D-E-Y, uh, M-J, M and J, Mary Jane. You know, just get creative. Try to think of everything. You, I wrote Mysterio. I might add some other random villains I, th I can think of i think I, I don't know who's in the game to be honest i think mysterio is but i don't i don't really know uh i i, I if if you've been going radio dark i won't i won't say anything else from the trailers but there's other trailer villains i've seen that i've added uh and i've just got creative and been like oh you know i don't want to know if this you know i put some random spider-man villains in there you know uh not not as an example of what i put in there but i put in shocker and these things or i can't remember who else i put in there but 
uh, you know, make sure to put vi- venom in these things. Uh, try to try to stay safe out there. Of course, I know a lot of people will just not use social media, but a lot of us are just like, eh, I like it too much, especially with current events and these things that are going on. I need to use it to stay up to date with certain things. Xbox announced the Series S starter bundle for two ninety nine, so no price change, uh, and it includes a three months of Game Pass Ultimate. Kind of a no brainer, right? You know, they can finally advertise it. They can say, hey, this is the bundle. It's literally called the Star Bundle. Very quick, clean to the point. Hey, buy this, get three months. Uh, we'll start you on the crack, and this is how we'll maybe get you, hopefully, to them, right? Series S is a wild, wild success for them, something that I never saw coming. I didn't think the Series S would be nearly as popular as it is. They're selling, their market share is probably 60 70% of their total uh, console sales through. And the series s is or series x i'm sorry is somewhere between a 30 and 40 percent and that is something that i just did not see coming at all i didn't think it'd be so so much much bigger in reality now of course that is because the series s was clearly their motivation to get out there much more i think that is undoubtedly it seemed like that much more units were out of those that was much more widely available so that was just easier to buy and also the price in these things were other motivators but i do think partially that is what microsoft wanted i i don't i don't think that is up really for debate because just with availability in these things it seems like that was the thing that they wanted to make sure was out there and seems to be biting them in the ass a bit unfortunately and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the news Let's discuss what have you been playing? Of course, this is the segment of the show where I talk about what I have been playing. Now, this is, of course, a question that I ask myself, but of course, I ask you at home as this is a conversation. So what have you been playing? Is there something out there that is keeping your attention currently? Is there something you're doing? Maybe some boxes that need to be checked in certain titles or video games and at least such as. Now, I have been playing quite a bit of things. Now, Liza P, I, I played, of course, is Spoiler Class live right now. If you have played the game, you can go over to Easy Achievers, of course. I'm on the YouTube page or SoundCloud uh, or Spotify or whatever you want to use. And you can watch the Spoiler Cast and listen to it. And I actually liked it. Of course, the returning uh, guest, uh, Alex, uh, former co-host of this show, came and gave his thoughts on the game. We talked about the lore. We discussed thoughts about what might happen. if 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 there is a sequel and how the game shocked us. I can't recommend that game quite enough as I don't really see enough people discussing this game and it kind of hurts as I do think it's something very, very special in the beginning of something very, very special. And it will be up there for me and as the game of the attendance because it just played so, so well. I very, very much fell in love with how it played. The the tight controls, although some things were, of course, issues. Uh, I think the game kind of flounders a bit when you actually when it tries to have Dark Souls bosses uh, in terms of uh, size. I think that's actually when the game has the biggest problems. But aside from that, when it's just a a, uh, regular enemy, the game is really good, and I loved my time with it. Uh, What else have I been playing? Of course, I talked about Assassin's Creed Mirage. I've been playing that. I am in the early stage of that, 12 hours, I believe. A little less, maybe. I'm having a blast. So far, it is a nice kind of palate cleanser, simple game. It's very straightforward. It is not complicated at all. It is a return to form for the Assassin's Creed game. This is exactly what they said it would be. It is an Assassin's Creed game for better and for worse. There are things that I I immediately, upon picking it up, I was like, yep, they, this is uh, an Assassin's Creed 1-2 uh, you know, era game. Kind of, it feels just like that. Assassin's Creed 3, all the other, you know, sounds... feels exactly like those games even to the point of the maps and these things and uh what i mean for better for worse is the combat doesn't feel great i did enjoy odyssey's combat quite a bit uh this one we're going back to the you know you really only have to parry there's really no reason to fight anyone it's just sit there and wait for them to hit you that was actually a thing in assassin's creed 2 and 1 as well Uh, you really kind of countered you didn't really have to fight anybody so the moment you can counter, it's pretty much an instant kill for pretty much anything in the game except for the big characters. And then once you have certain tools, uh, they become jokes. Uh, they kept the staple smoke bomb being completely OP, just like an Assassin's Creed 2, just a complete overpowered device that you can use at any time to, to really feel like a deadly assassin in like the smoke or something. That's something they, they bring back for this game too. And it's nice, but... 
you have to know you're getting the good and the bad with certain things, right? Like the combat doesn't feel great, especially something like something after Liza P playing it just after that just doesn't feel great. It is content light if you, in terms of uh, your actual weapons and armor. Uh, I think I have all the armor in the game and none of them are exciting at all. Really? Uh, it is a stealth game, though, which is really nice. I, I do feel like an assassin crazy that I haven't really felt like an assassin in quite a while in a game called Assassin's Creed, but I actually do feel like an assassin. I feel like I do need to sneak around and fight. I understand combat kind of sucks, and I think that's because they don't want you to fight. They want you, I think, to really skulk around and be careful, uh, but it's just that doesn't change the fact that it doesn't feel great, although there might be a good reason for it still, though. Uh, there's even a tooltip in the game that says, you know, hey, don't try to fight a lot of people at once because they might all kill you. And that's not true at all. You just parry everything. And the parry, incredibly, incredibly generous. I mean, he literally parries with a dagger and he just waves it in front of him for a few seconds. And like anytime someone hits you in that, it is an insta kill whenever you want to do it. So I do recommend the title if you a die hard Assassin's Creed fan. But I feel like you would have already bought the game by now. So I don't think I really need to discuss this with anyone. If you're just looking for maybe a checkbox game, I would I would say, hey, check this out, maybe. But there's so, so many good titles. It's hard really to say you need to go out and buy this. If you're busy, if you're looking for if, if you're waiting for Spider-Man or something, I would just say do something else and wait. And this is a great maybe $30 purchase down the road unless you really want to jump into this world and play the game. So far, the story is kind of whatever. I barely care, honestly. The gameplay is kind of what's keeping me because I do like stealthing and assassinating, throwing knives and these things. That's very fun. Aside from that, I think that's all I wanted to really talk about with the game. Uh, let's move on. because I think I, I, I want to get into the, sh the nitty gritty of the show. Rumor Roundup. A job posting on NeoWiz has shown that there are immediate plans for a DLC in a seemingly hit release of Lies of P, first pointed out by Okami Games on Twitter and then verified again by IGN as the post is in Korean. The listing said it needs a quest planner role for the Lies of P DLC. So, you know, technically still a rumor, but like also kind of undoubtable that they are making a DLC. They even had an update for the IGN article that I read. Uh, stating like you know there's no plans currently to announce anything but it's like you know the cat's out the back we, we know dlc is coming uh which is very good because they probably need more money off of this game i imagine this cost them a lot of money as they were pretty much not to be rude here but they were pretty much nobodies before this not trying to denigrate what they're doing uh but they weren't really relevant in this space and they dropped this giant giant bomb on us that clearly cost 120 million dollars maybe you know somewhere around there 100 100 million bucks like this thing was probably very expensive uh, so they need to capitalize on that money reuse some assets make a dlc charge you 10 bucks maybe and you can get it all that way we'll see uh, hi very excited though very excited be curious to see what the dlc is about because the game pretty much definitively ends so maybe you'll play as different characters there are two characters that can live that might have dlc made about them i can't i don't know maybe you'll go somewhere else there are hints throughout the game that maybe you that, that you could go somewhere else i don't know we'll have to see digital pits this is actually i i found this via wario 64 on twitter uh, and i don't know who digital bits is that's why i put in the rumor roundup a lot of people are circulating this story though so i'm assuming everyone else knows who digital bits are and i just don't but i don't want to pretend like i do so i saw them everyone seems to trust them so i tentatively trust what they're reporting digital Bytes reports that best buy may be ending the selling of physical media for both in-store and online as early as q1 2024 and that was pretty much it there wasn't much else discussing it's pretty shocking if that is true as why do you go to best buy if not for stuff like that right isn't that why we like best buy that's why i use best buy every now and then i go on their like black friday deals and i buy a bunch of movies and these things like at once uh i mean i'll, I'll drop 80 100 bucks some years on like oh, these are movies throughout the year i wanted they're all on sale for like ten dollars and i just get a bunch of movies 
and it looks like they're going to stop that. I don't know why I would go to Best Buy now, except once every few years when I need a TV, right? Uh, I, I have my TV for probably the, the next eight, eight, six years. So, like, I don't see a need to really go to this place now if they do stop that. But this all could be um, nothing. This could be something. Who knows? But I did want to bring this to everyone's attention. Let's start this show for the week. The long-rumored PS5 Slim has been shown, and at least for me, it's a bit of a disappointment. Now, let's talk facts before we get into impressions. The PS5 Slim was revealed on October 10th uh, via PS uh, PlayStation blog, and it has been reduced by 30% in volume, and the weight has been reduced by around 20% from the previous models. They said that, so I felt like it was worthy of mentioning. The major change is, of course, the detachable disk drive for the main console, but to me, the biggest change comes in pricing, as the digital console has been increased by a whopping $50 USD, and the bundled PS5 will stay the same price at $499 USD. Of course, that bundled is the bundled disk drive with the system, okay? Strange price increase at the digital edition only extra feature is a smaller size, the addition of no disk drive, and another 200 gigabytes in storage, and that seems to be pretty much it, and a good way of reducing everything that is new with this version. Another minus would be the stand no longer is transferable between horizontal and vertical. The horizontal stand is included with both systems, but the vertical stand is only available separately at $29.99. The covers will still be replaceable, although they are now four covers instead of two. They are split up pretty much in half of the system. So if you think about the regular PS5 now, shrink it by literally 30%. Uh, it's still almost the same. Uh, it's almost the same length, I guess. Uh, the width is is brought down quite a bit. So it, it is smaller to me as in like, you know, that's much that's impressive enough to warrant a slim version. But the minuses I, to me outweigh the positives and i would just tell people just buy a digital version now or buy a physical version now uh, what are you getting for the extra 50 200 gigabytes more so in my mind you're not getting anything because at that point i've seen one terabytes and two terabytes uh ssd expansions which you can still expand the new one of course but I've seen these expansions go as cheap as 60 bucks. I bought my one terabyte PS5 expansion. Oh, There's my cat on video making a piercing. That's Cersei. Hi. So, say, say hi, Cersei, to everybody. No, she didn't say anything. You can still expand the SSD on the PS5 Slim. And, of course, on the original version. I've bought my one terabyte storage device for like 60 bucks, I think. Two terabytes. I can't remember how much it is. But it was like $60. It was on sale. You can easily expand the storage. So the 200 gigabytes to me is pretty much negligible because if it's if the storage is really that big of issue for the same price, you can buy a digital edition right now. Is it bigger? Sure. I don't. I, not that big a deal. I imagine your like little place that you're going to put it will fit it. Um, but I, I can't imagine is that big a deal. You buy the the digital edition now, and for the same price, right? So if you get the six SSD, I get you get a terabyte extra. So you get eight hundred gigs more than you would have with getting this thing. Now I understand it's smaller; it doesn't come with the. Uh, it, it's it is now modifiable that it can come with the disk drive. So you're getting more options, technically. But it, this is just not, this is a big loss for me, as this is something you could have really done something cool and special with. They, of course, raised the price as a market leader will do, right? You, Of course they would, because they're in the lead. They can do this. It, it, I'm sure they're making even more money off this thing now. Of course, the way consoles work is you're, you kind of sell at a loss at launch, but then the components become cheaper as time moves on. So they're already making money off this thing. The digital edition was already not selling much because they weren't making much because I'm sure it cost the either the profit margins were either zero or negative or at least close to zero. So they already weren't barely selling that thing anyways. The disc edition was far, far more out there. I imagine the disc edition is, I mean, 80% of PS5s out there, I imagine. Right? That barely saw the digital edition. I worked at GameStop at the time of all this. So I know 
the, the digital edition was far rarer than than the regular edition. So now you're getting for fifty dollars more a digital edition that you'll be able to add a CD ROM to it, a CD player to it, which is cool, I guess. But you're losing out on a lot more, in my opinion, as that fifty bucks could be much wiser, wise, uh, much more wisely spent. And also, this is just a lame thing to do. I feel like from Sony, right? You're you're in the lead with market, and you raise your price by fifty bucks. Uh, in the U.S., I imagine this is a way to one. This is like making money in so many ways. So none of the components have changed, right? So stick with me here. None of the components changed. So it's the same price as they were making it when it debuted uh, for them. Probably it's a little cheaper. The components might have gotten a little cheaper from that by now. I don't know. I don't I don't know what that was. They're making it smaller, meaning shipping and these things will save you money. This is how granular a lot of these companies need to get because it's very important. The actual dimensions of your of your units that you sell are very important. So now you're able to shrink the units by uh, the actual box sizes. So you're able to fit more things in shipping containers and all these things. You're able to get more out there easily. So you're saving money that way. You're also saving money by upping the price of this damn thing. So, right? so it's now more expensive. So you're now making more money than you were before. And now you're making even more because it's both increase in price or you have to buy the $4.99 version which is fine but you're now locked into that or if you buy the digital edition and want to upgrade later the detachable disk drive is $80 by itself so it's just so many things where it's like does do you really have to do this why is it 80 bucks when the thing is 450 like, there's so many weird things with this and I understand I understand it is in Sony's interest for you to have a digital version it is fully in their interest because, one, uh, they make way more money off a digital version uh, because there is no middleman. It's it's directly from PlayStation to you. And, of course, the cut goes to whoever made the game, right? So let's say Control. They sell Control on the PlayStation Store digitally. They cut. They get their 30% th uh, 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 cut. Let's just assume it's standard rate. So they get their 30% cut from the store. Control gets their 70% of the, of the sale. It's done. You sell physical, of course. You have the issue of, all right, we sold the disc. Okay, now we have to get the money for the publisher. Now GameStop makes the money or whatever, Best Buy, whatever you want to say. And then they get their cut and then XYZ, whatever. Right? Big issue with a lot of these things, right? It's just someone else to deal with in the transaction. So I understand this is the motivator in many ways to get this out there and proliferate this more. I imagine this will be the more common console going forward as the, of course the, Oh, she's hit <laughs> she, my cat's wanting attention. She hit the mic closer to my mouth. I imagine the, this will be much more common moving forward as the, this has to be the preferred way they want to do it. They want you to, to get this digital version, pay the extra now, uh, so they start making more of them because they're now going to be, I imagine, making slightly more than they were at launch, if not much more in terms of their profit on the original version, now making maybe that same amount of profit margins on this version now with the increased price. And again, it being small, like there's just so many little things that that they are really doubling down on the profits from this thing. And as a market leader, they're doing what, exa what exactly I'd expect from a market leader to do. Raise price, pretend like you're given more options, and at the same time, kind of taking away the options at the same time. Like It's just silly. It's a strange thing to do. Another $50 for, for a system that is now three years old. We're already discussing wanting of a pro, right? There's many people out there that already want a new system in our hands. I think I'm done venting, but suffice to say, I was thoroughly disappointed. I thought this was going to be something cool. I wanted it to look a, li a bit better. It just looks like a slightly smaller <laughs> PS5. It has the exact same design, except it has a line through it now. And it doesn't have that disk drive bulging out of it in the regular model. In, in the uh, disk version, it still looks horrifying because it, it literally looks like a cancer sore or something is on the thing. I don't know. Anyways, like I got I to gotta reach around my cat really quick so I can scroll down. There we go. Now, next up story. Talk about Disney. 
According to Bloomberg, there are reports that Disney executives are pressuring Bob Iger, CEO of Disney, to invest much more into gaming. Seemingly, the senior executives want a change from, quote, gaming line C, end quote, to, quote, gaming giant, end quote. As an easy get-in purchases, uh, uh, as an easy get-in, Purchases were floated around, like buying EA or Ubisoft. And the port does state that Bob Iger is non-committal. Quote, sorry, quote, non-committal, end quote. There's not much of the story. And also, it's hard to believe these stories as, do we really have the ins and outs of what a senior executive says to Bob Iger and, like, their actual internal plannings on, on if they were to buy something? Because it, that is so high up that it's hard to, to be like, oh, they're really wanting to buy them. Like, it's almost like every time we hear these stories, like it, it's almost confirmation that we won't see it. Or at least it's just wild speculation to, to some point. Because the talks that are needed to actually warrant some of this seem to be so much bigger than than something someone can go report on, right? We're talking about like the biggest lawyers, the highest paid lawyers, the highest paid executives in in the market talking to each other and we're just like oh yeah no th th there's pressuring also they're pressuring bob Iger. is that even i don't think that's how it works and also it, it, uh, bob guy seems to know how he's doing uh seems to know what he's doing and also he seems to have a lot of cachet at disney it'd be sh shocking that anyone is pressuring him in doing anything because i imagine he, they might be floating the idea or something but i don't know i don't have much to say about this because it doesn't it seems like a nothing story to be honest kind of seems like oh we heard this so let's report on it uh, but maybe there is something more than meets the eye for me it's funny if you're looking at my camera right now my dog is uh sitting up the exact same way the halloween dog is too i don't know why that's in here by the way i think my wife bought that to put that out for halloween decorations i maybe she's saving it for halloween i don't know but i don't know why it's not out there right now it's kind of cute because if you flip it i think it's christmas dog on the other end so like you can dual like use it for both things very cute i, I like it uh, I think my dog wants to play with the cat and the cat does not want to play with the dog. <laughs> Pretty sure is what's happening right now. A slight update to the Unity story as they have walked back many of their pricing decisions like increasing the cap on the revenue for Pro and enter my members from 100000 to 200000 before they see that runtime feature we discussed a few weeks ago. And the beginner plans, Personal and Plus, will not see the fee at all. But also... And the reason we're talking about them today mainly is because their CEO has announced their retirement effective immediately following the pricing debacle. I don't think we have to spend any more time on this guy. This guy actually sold out his shares before the announcement. So it showed that he knew this was a terrible idea and went for it anyways. Uh, maybe he disagreed with it. I don't know. But uh, still very shady that you could do that. I don't know how that's not illegal, but I guess it isn't because we know for a fact he did sell them all. Uh, he literally sold all his shares, and I'm curious if he was already retiring, maybe, and then this was just, like, expedited it. I don't know, but good job, Unity. You completely destroyed your reputation in, like, a week. So, nice. I want to read this story, actually, from IGN. This is not a write-up from me. This is actually a write-up from IGN by Wesley Wienpool. Hopefully I pronounce it correctly. Remedy opens up about challenging developing Alan Wake 2 for Xbox Series S. Now, I wanted to highlight a couple things from the story. As one, it's a very good story and a very good uh, outline of, of how Remedy feels about developing for the Series S. And I wanted to read a couple snippets from this article. Of course, I want everyone to go give this a click. Remember, the rules here is I don't read the whole story. So I, want, I, I think it really is a good story. Everyone should go click on it, read it, really absorb it as, I've, uh, as I, I do as well. I try to read it all, absorb it, give them the click, give them all their revenue from the and ads that go everywhere anyways speaking to uh, and this is on ign's next console watch yeah the, the most recent app used remedies communication directors thomas pua has talked about a lot of things so this is on their recent episode and this of course is a write-up quote series s the cpu is pretty much the same as the series x but the gpu is an issue it really is and then having less memory is a pretty big problem too and we often get okay you make pc games surely you know how to scale well the memory is not a problem on pc it really isn't and that's one of the struggles when you talk about resolution and frame rate it's just not enough to drop the resolution heavily that's what we're doing on the S, and we're really, really working hard to ensure the visual quality still holds up. People accept that on a weaker PC, the visuals are not going to be as good as your frame rates, not 
uh, uh, sorry, is let me back up. People accept that on a weaker PC, the visuals are not going to be as good and your frame rates not going to be as good. There's a massive difference on Series S and Series X GPU. And sure, people can mention this game did this so well and all that, and every game is different and every developer is different, but you can't have the best of both worlds. You got to choose what you're going to focus. The Series S is $250 and the X and PS5 are $500 to $600. Uh, obviously, there's a massive difference between the power you're getting, right? It's a lot easier to scale on the PC because of memory. And it's not like there's one super PC and one weaker PC. There are like 300 PC configurations in between. And trust me, that's a massive struggle. But we shipped a lot of PC games, so we're a bit better about that. We've really worked hard on getting S to run at a solid 30 and tried to maintain a good visual quality. But if you want to see the game at its best and full next-gen glory, it's going to be on the machine that that have the hardware grunt to enable that end quote yet another developer out coming out and and speaking about the issues with the series s and having polarity with their next gen counterparts i find it interesting as if you would have asked me i would have said it the cpu was the problem for a lot of these things and it's not it seems to be the gpu again i am very tech illiterate so i apologize if i do sound ignorant on some of these things but this is simply something i'm just not incredibly familiar with so I do, but I do try. So, so let me give a little bit of background to uh, my thought process on this entire ball. So it seems to me that the Series S was always. How do I put this? It, uh, yeah. In hindsight, the Series S was much, much bigger part of the of the Xbox problem than I think we all thought at the time. And it, definitely me at the time. I'm not trying to speak for anyone else here, but. The issue that Xbox ran into running into the Xbox series generation or this current generation, whatever you want to call it, is that they had such a loss in the Xbox One generation from console share uh, to the actual market share that they had to, I guess, get creative and make up a solution of how do we penetrate the market where we will be found and that solution was in a series s machine that is as cheap i guess as possible as they could possibly make it and i assume they're selling at a loss i imagine they're not making much money on this thing if they are making money at all i, I highly doubt they are so they sell this thing and they sell it in the market that was not really being challenged which is the market that is cheapest or the market that people don't mind if they're not getting the best thing or the the more casual market there's no better way of putting that and they went pretty hard into it seemingly with how many units they made I, it seems like they prioritized this vastly to the amount of series x's they made i, I think that's obvious by now we talked about that earlier in the show and it seems that they doubled down and almost tripled down uh, up to the point even uh as we discuss all these problems now to the point where, like we said, the market share is all series S almost now to, to a 60, 40, 70, 30 split favoring series S. And we're getting to a point where devs are having problems keeping up with the agreement clause that you have to do when you ship on Xbox, that if you're going to ship on the series X, you have to have your game work on series S. And there's specific things that it's like, well, it has to have polarity or it has to, it has to be able to be, to run next to each other so it has to not miss certain features that's the entire reason Baldur's Gate didn't launch on there originally but Phil eventually uh, apparently went to them personally and said look what what do you need to get on there and he's like well we can't do co-op fine get it on the system I don't know why that took so long for them to do that but it did that was the only reason Xbox is not on there is because they could not get co-op to work on the Series S why did that take so long for that to be approved from Larian making Baldur's Gate 3, which we already knew was going to be a success? Not as big of a success as it was, but I keep going back to this. Like, why is this not more of an issue? We have to have Xbox is not in the market to be able to make demands. They have to meet people where they are. If if Larian is even inkling not releasing on your system because a small thing that co-op can't be on series s you need to be on that immediately why are we fighting these issues when we're already past the finish line it's just strange to me that xbox pretends like they have this cachet 
and they're in third place. Like they again, I always say in the show, they love to remind us, especially in that famous kind of funny interview. Right. He's you know, he cried and said, like, oh, you know, I'm fa- you know, we're in third place. Doesn't matter if Starfield's a 10 out of 10. We won't sell consoles. I can't imagine that's true. Maybe he has data I don't know of. But if Starfield was a 10 out of 10, I'm telling you, it would have moved much more units. If Skyrim was on your system exclusively, uh, I would say you'd sell more systems, my man. Uh, but hey, he's the guy making eight, nine figures. I'm not. So yeah. There we go. I don't, I think I'm kind of repeating myself from past episodes, so I do apologize for that, but it's just, when I get to this specific issue, it, it's, there's only so much I can say, and and that, I think there is some small regret from the Series S, but maybe there's not, because that's how they're in the market now. But is it because that's how they made it? And we've seen the internal plans that the, the plan is maybe to not make consoles anymore which is horrifying for me. And that means I might have to leave Xbox as like a primary place to play, but who knows? We'll have to see. And this is all speculation on my part, of course, but I don't know. I wanted to discuss this openly with everyone and I didn't want to write out my feelings because I did want to discuss it out. I hope everyone understands where I'm coming from with a specific argument. Let me know if you agree or disagree, of course, in the comments below. Remember, this show is a conversation. You can, you can, Say whatever you'd like, of course, in the comments below. Tweet at me, whatever you want, and we can have full discussions. Again, I, as a reminder, I talk to every commenter when I can. That's the show for the week. Let's talk about date updates. Uh, the Evil Dead announced that there will not be pursuing new content for Evil Dead the game. Sorry. Saber Interactive <laughs> announced that they will not be pursuing development on the new, uh, new content for Evil Dead the game. So that game is now dead. Uh, so time to move on, I guess. I don't know if anyone was playing that. I didn't see anyone play it, to be honest with you. Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition comes October 6th on PS5 and PC. This will, of course, include the base game and Burning Shores. Also, I believe it's going to be on two discs. Which is interesting. There's a huge write-up on PlayStation Blog if you want to read a little bit about this. But uh, suffice to say, new edition coming out. It's going to include the DLC. Game Pass titles. Of course, I read the Game Pass titles for the upcoming games that are coming on Game Pass. And, of course, I read the PlayStation Plus titles every week, too, but no update this week, only Game Pass. And uh, right now, available as of recording, we have Gotham Knights, Cloud PC, and Xbox Series S and X. I really do feel like this is a must-try. Note that I said must-try, not must-play, but a must-try, as they had a huge issue, of course, with their frame rate. Still not fixed. I don't think it is going to be fixed because of the way the game was made. So there's just problems that just will never be fixed, probably. So it's a 30 frames game. You do feel it because it's a fast paced game. I don't know what they were thinking when, when they started doing this, but on consoles, it probably will never be 60 frames. Hopefully one day it is, but probably not. I hope there's a sequel to this because it did sell well. I think they will learn a lot from this, but I dig the game a lot. Now, it is one of those games where like you only really feel cool at the end of the game because you have all your cool stuff and gadgets and all these things, but... I recommend everyone at least give it a shot as Game Pass is that perfect place where you can give these things a shot. And I believe the PlayStation Plus games were leaked. And next month, Gotham Knights is also on PlayStation Plus. So there you go. Lamplighters League, Cloud PC and Xbox Series S and X. It's a day one console release. And then uh, also available right now, Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide. Forza Motorsport. The new Forza Motorsport. Get excited. I know a lot of people love that game. So check it out. I have it downloaded. I'll give it a shot. I'm not a big Motorsport guy. I'm more a Horizon guy. I'm not super into the techno techno side of the racing games, you know, tuning and all these things. I'm not really into that. So more of a casual guy from that perspective. Also uh, available as a recording from space, cloud console and PC. And then October 17th, Like a Dragon Ishing, cloud console and PC. And that's it. That's everything from uh, now until about mid-October. I remember October 16th. It's the last game. Uh, we have everything leaving October 15th. Remember, if you want these titles, you do have to buy them before they leave to submit to uh, make sure you get your 20% off. So you do get 20% off all these titles. Remember, the same goes as for DLC. So everything leaving October 15th. Evile, Cloud Console and PC, Overwhelm PC, Shenzhen IO PC, Legend of Tending, Cloud Console and PC, Trek to Yomi, Cloud Console and PC, 
Turnip Boy commits tax evasion. Cloud console A and PC. Quite an interesting last game, isn't that? That's the week for you. Quite short week this week. That's your legacy. Not too much for us to discuss. I More of a lighthearted week. More of a uh, discussionary week, I feel like. Nothing too nitty gritty with details. And the dog's chasing the cat. I mean, I think. Let's talk about what's queued up for the weekend. Now, I don't think, I, again, not much to say here because what I started the show with is what I'll be playing. Sorry, had to put a cut there. I had some animal issues. I think the cat's still, yeah, the cat's still in front of me here. Um, What's queued up? More Mirage? I hope 2,000 that very soon because it doesn't seem hard. So I'm going to see if I can do that. I'm continuing my Cyberpunk replay as it's just I wanted to replay it, to be honest, and, you know, get more achievements. I want to uh, try out the different uh, different build because the game lacks any New Game Plus feature at all. And also, you can only reset your attributes once. Uh, incredibly lame. And I had to do that when I started the game on my first character uh, because they retooled all the skills. So I had to kind of rebuild my character from the base up. And so that's pretty lame. But uh, aside from that... Uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed Mars, Cyberpunk, and yeah. And also, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show, I'm doing a October, like, watch film fest kind of thing I called. I pretty much called it an October film fest. Me and my wife have, like, a little notes app, and we have, like, a bunch of movies on there. And we're watching a movie every month. I tried to get a review out of every movie we've seen, and I do have that live on my Twitter. I go by movie by movie and discuss each uh, and do a little, you know, enough to fit in a tweet. I don't have like the the it's still called blue, whatever it's called. I think it's still called blue. I don't know. I'm not verified, so I can't do like the long form stuff. It's just what can fit in the tweet. So it's very brief. And uh, I put a little review every day. We watch something. I, I, I do it in batches more than every day, I guess I should say. Uh, but I do try and do it as quick as I can anyways. So check that out on my Twitter if that interests you. You want to uh, watch along with me in quotes or at least see my impressions of some of these movies. Uh, and that's really it. Uh, I'm really just waiting on Spider-Man. We won't I won't have it by next week, of course. So uh, I will be playing it over the weekend of next week and I'll discuss it and make an impressions video Monday or Tuesday. Aside from that, nothing, nothing extremely unique planned other than that, right? Might do a spoiler cast for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Don't know yet. But aside from that, Achievers, thank you so much for joining me this week. I cannot wait for Spider-Man 2, honestly. Just constantly waiting on this game. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week slash weekend. And until next time, go Chief.